From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Thanks for joining us this morning. It is Tuesday, August 15th. Let's get started. The defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election results. Former President Donald Trump and top allies facing felony charges normally used to take down mobsters, all in a sweeping 41 count indictment out of Georgia that came down last night. It's a tragedy beyond tragedies. Prayers, perseverance, that's what we need. The loss of life staggering in Maui. Crews sifting through ashes of lost homes and historic landmarks after the deadliest wildfire in the country in 100 years. So far, uh, it's a better return than the stock market. <laughs> An East Bay man loves collecting toy cars. He has so many, it's almost unbelievable. And his hobby has become his lifeline. Just being with kids, they're magical. And heading back to school, one remarkable teacher has made a difference for thousands of young minds, all from the same classroom for decades. And good morning to all of you. I can't think of a better way to start my day than with you guys. Aww. And hopefully our viewers feel the same about our new revamped morning show. I'm Nicole Zalumis. Well, we're so glad you came back, Nicole. <laughs> Happy to have you here. I'm Gianna Franco. We did not scare her away. We I'm Reed Cowan. And I was, it was so nice last night. I slept with the windows open. Ooh. Just beautiful outside. Yes, that was me snoring, neighbor. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Jess with weather. We're going to give you credit for those beautiful overnight temperatures. Oh, yeah, but uh, I don't want to take credit for the daytime highs today off near Brentwood and Fairfield. Whoa, I'm not sure if you saw that. There was just some lightning just above this burga. Actually, that was really exciting to see. I'm going to clip this later. Let's take a live look outside right now. A sunrise underneath a little bit of thunderstorm activity here in the Bay Area. We're seeing some light showers pass throughout the Bay Area this morning as we're all waking up. Don't be shocked if you see some wet roads, but to be honest, be kind of shocked because for the most part, it's just Virga. It's that rain that you can kind of see dissipating as it gets closer to the surface level. So that's what we're waking up to. We have a lot of dry air moving its way in really fast as that storm system tracks just to the north of us. We're going to continue to see this drying trend throughout the next couple days, but let's see a little bit closer to home because we're also seeing some rain activity off into the East Bay. Just a line of thunderstorms or a line of showers for now, I should say, that's ranging anywhere from Tracy all the way up into Antioch just along the floor. So some light drizzle right now off into the East Bay. That's what we're waking up to. Back to that live look of the Virga just over the bay, though. This is what we're looking at for temperatures right now. 56 degrees in San Francisco. So grab the jacket before you head out the door. 66 for our friends in Concord. 58 over in Santa Rosa. Later into this afternoon, we're going to heat up a lot off into our East Bay. I mean, we're talking about upper 90s, triple digits. That's going to be the case today and tomorrow. And then luckily, we cool down heading into this weekend as low pressure moves in. But for now, along the coast, we're still dealing with some partly cloudy skies and 60s in sight. I'll have more beautiful live looks coming up in a bit. For now, over to you, Gianna. Yeah, that was a beautiful live look there just the clouds over the city Ooh, look at the lightning one more time there very cool all right let's get a live look at the bay bridge right now talk about the roadways and again just mentioning we might see some slick surfaces out there this morning and maybe you might get a catch of some lightning too you'll be able to see that so just be extra careful bay bridge metering lights are on and it's moving very slowly at the toll plaza as you wake up and get out the door out of the east bay heading over into the city start thinking about maybe start getting going because it's getting busy if you're headed out of marin county we are dealing with some fog across the Golden Gate. It's foggy along 280. If you're heading in and out of San Francisco, Daly City, Colma, San Bruno, really socked in along the roadways there. And we are starting to track a few brake lights also along that southbound 680 commute as you work your way from the Dublin interchange down into the Sunol grade. Certainly getting busy there, but thumbs up for that 101 commute over to South City. All right, thanks, G. Developing this morning, the word indictment getting very familiar for former President Donald Trump. Trump late yesterday indicted for the fourth time in just five months. So this time it's a little bit different. A Georgia grand jury handed an unprecedented 41 charges against the former president. And by the way, he's not the only one in the hot seat this morning. We're talking about a network of nearly two dozen of his allies who are going to now have to answer for their alleged roles in trying to overturn the 2020 election. So the message from prosecutors to Trump and team, there's a ticking clock. They say you have until next Friday to voluntarily surrender to authorities. So look for that as a headline as you go into your day. Here's Jared Hill with more. New legal trouble for former President Donald Trump. A Fulton County grand jury 
returned a true bill of indictment. Georgia District Attorney Fonnie Willis late Monday with the 41 count indictment against the GOP frontrunner and 18 of his allies. The defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election results. The indictment unsealed before cameras also names former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and Trump's one-time personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani. The former New York City mayor, one of those accused of racketeering and conspiracy for allegedly putting in calls to pressure local officials and making false statements about election fraud. Overnight, Giuliani called the indictment part of a book of lies. Georgia's former Republican Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan testified before the grand jury yesterday. My hope is that Americans believe us. My hope is that Republicans believe us. The investigation was first sparked by Trump's January 2021 phone call with Georgia's Secretary of State. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. Trump has maintained he didn't do anything wrong and his campaign called the indictment election interference. It's time now for a look at this morning's top stories. The death toll from Maui's devastating wildfires has risen to 99. Today, officials will begin releasing the names of those who died in the fires. Hawaii's governor is asking Attorney General to place a moratorium on any sales of properties that have been damaged or destroyed in the wildfires. Residents and state officials are concerned predatory developers will swoop in and redevelop land that should be preserved and protected for residents. We'll have a live report from Maui in the next half hour. Here at home, San Jose city workers won't be walking off the job today. City officials and the workers union reached a tentative agreement in labor negotiations. The planned three-day strike is now suspended until the San Jose City Council approves their terms, which is scheduled to happen later today. The union represents 4,500 city workers. Grab your pencils, rulers, and notebooks. It's time to go back to school this week and last week. We've been seeing students and teachers all getting prepared for the new school year. And our Sean Chitness is live at Robert Semple Elementary School in Benicia. Oh, look at you, grade A student in the classroom already. Good morning. Nicole, good morning. Yeah, our coverage of Back to School is bringing out the student in all of us. And it is so great, so cool to be inside a classroom, a first grade classroom. And we have a special guest this morning. Let's say good morning to Christina Moore. She is the principal here at this school. So first, Christina, give us a sense of what it has it taken to get us today, to get you ready for the first day of school here. Yeah, it has been an incredible fun journey over the summer. We are never off truly, but we have been working hard to beautify our school, get all of the new materials that have been adopted for our teachers for curriculum, and to make sure that we are just fully prepared for our students today. Right, so we want to walk around this classroom because it is a very nice classroom. This is for first graders, so Christina, come with me. And we also want to talk a little bit about what's happening new this year at the school. You were mentioning to me that you guys are getting four new teachers this year, and that is yes. a big deal. Excited. We're so excited. You know, we are in a teacher shortage across this nation, and I feel absolutely blessed that in our district we are blessed with highly qualified teachers um, that are absolutely fantastic, and we are just so excited to add them to our our, um, our team. Right, right. And that's a lot for a school of around 440 students. Last thing we want to talk about is that this is a great time to be in this school district because of the funding that has been passed. And what will we see around the school, around the district because of that funding? Absolutely. We have so many amazing projects happening right now. All of the schools in Benicia Unified School District are getting something. Um, but a huge thank you to our community for supporting our Measure S bond because without them, what's happening at Semple could not be possible. We received three new portables on our blacktop to expand our programs. We have received a new HVAC system, a new sound system, and we have been able to upgrade our plumbing. Um, we are built in 1955, as well as a beautiful fresh coat of paint that we received last year. Our school looks amazing. So a lot to learn about, a lot to show you throughout the morning, and we are excited to do that. Christina is going to be our guest all morning long, starting her day an extra hour early just so we could experience what is happening here at Robert Semple Elementary, and we look forward to that in our next half hour. Nicole, back to you. It's great to hear of all of those improvements. Thank you so much, Sean. All right, so moving right along, are you noticing more and more of those electric vehicles on the road? I'm seeing them. You're seeing e-bikes and scooters in your neighborhood zooming around. Well, we all know that they are powered by those lithium ion batteries. 
We're also learning that that is presenting kind of a new challenge for first responders who are working hard to keep you safe because we've seen fires. Consumer correspondent Asher Qureshi joins us live now to explain how technology is outpacing some safety standards. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, Reed. Well, last year, the number of electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles registered in the U.S. grew to nearly three and a half million, more than six times what it was in 2016. And for you in California, it's quadrupled. And that means inevitably those types of cars are something first responders are encountering more often. We found out they're still learning just how to tackle fires involving EVs, which can be unpredictable. They can be burn hotter and longer due to the lithium ion batteries that power them. The tactics that we're using for internal combustion engine vehicles don't really apply to the batteries on these electric vehicles. How much water do you need to fight an EV fire? Potentially 10 times the amount of water compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle fire. Where we're using 300 to 500 gallons of water, we may use 3,000 5, uh, 5,000 gallons of water now. You're training while you're learning how these fires behave. How much of a challenge is that? It, it's huge because we don't have the science behind it to tell us exactly what's going on and the best way to combat these fires. So it probably leaves you wondering whether electric vehicles can be more dangerous than gas powered. Well, experts tell us they're not more dangerous, just different. And you'll learn why in our special report. They also say to minimize the risk of lithium ion battery fires, always follow the manufacturer's instructions when charging. And if your EV is ever in an accident, this is good to know. Park it outside, away from other cars and structures. We'll explain the reason for that in our special report as well. Reed? Fit and fantastic on a Tuesday morning. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for that report. And you know, we are seeing these lithium batteries mm -hmm. cause fires even here in the Bay Area. So it's something to watch. I'm always like, should I unplug things? I don't well, it's know. not just cars, yeah. it's scooters as right. well. We've and talked bikes. about the electric scooters with the kids. I plug them in every night, and that's a big no no leaving them plugged in overnight. I don't know. I don't imply. I wake up in the morning, and that's when I do it when I'm home on the weekends, because it's usually when we use them. But who knew? And also, too, if you're in a crash with an EV vehicle to park it outside, I would have never thought that until he mentioned that. That was a great.